Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Bernat Nautical Stripes Crochet Blanket. This is using Bernat Freesia yarn. Let me show you this yarn. Isn't that wonderful? So it's a boucle but the boucle is really tight to the core so it's actually really quite easy to crochet with and you can also frog with this meaning to rip it out um, really quite easily if you're working with it. So it's actually a really quick repeat and when I say repeat it's just a one row repeat this whole thing and it's actually a stitch that I hadn't known about before. So this is the wonderful thing about your inspirations always learning something new and what we have here is the crumpled griddle stitch. So if this is something that you wanted to learn or didn't even know but want to learn today is your lucky day. So we're gonna get ourselves started and let's talk more about this pattern because once I un you understand this pattern you can just put your hook into the wind and let's do it. So right here is the breakdown of all of the different colors. So you're gonna see here is the asterisk. So when you're going to repeat the colorway, you come back to the asterisk in order to do that. So you got two rows of, of B uh, and then you have two rows of A and etc. So when we go to start, we're going to be starting with A and we start the set of instructions with the foundation as well as the first row. So that's one of two of the, the first four rows. So you gotta do uh, two more rows after that's done and just work your way through this. So it says repeat from the asterisk three more times so you just work your way through. So this is a one row repeat when you're going to do this. If you'd like to change the size of this particular blanket then it is multiples of two and then add one at the end of the chain. So two, two, two. When you're happy with it add one more chain and you will be in balance. The wonderful thing about this uh, griddle stitch here is that you're going to notice that you really don't see the lines of crochet. Like when we look at crochet you can always see that there's lines when you're going to work through it. So that you can see lines. This particular stitch when you're working with it actually here's a sample. It looks like it's more of a solid fabric where you don't really see the lines at all. In person you can feel the stitches with your fingers. Yeah, it's got a little bit of texture to it and uh, it's actually a really easy pattern to be able to maintain. So without further ado let's start our chain and we're gonna get that done and let's begin. So let's begin. You see that this here is nice and tight to the core. So usually boucle can snag onto a hook really quite easily because it's so tight to the core it's, it's much much harder to do that. I haven't been able to do it yet so knock on wood. So let's uh, continue and we're gonna start off with a slip knot. And this is classified as an easy level with the K hook a six and a half millimeter. So you can just chain 127 if you want the sample but if you want to change the size just keep it in multiples of two. So one and two and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two and one and two. And when you're happy with it say you want this is the size that you want just add one more chain and then you'll have the balance and then we'll start the foundation row next. So let's begin. We're going to start across the foundation chain. Now I'm using the actual real yarn here on camera. Some people think that when I switch out the yarn they believe that it cannot be done with the yarn and you know they're making up stories. So what I want to do is demonstrate to you that it can be done in person. It's easier to see than all this light blasting at it from the studio but that's just the way it is. So we're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three and get to the fourth and turn it over and get the back um, hump of that chain and I want you to single crochet. Once you turn it over and get the back hump the chain will stay upside down. There you go. So the first chaining that I just skipped over is considered a double. This is a single. So the next one in the next chain and the hump here is going to be a double. And then the next one is going to be a single. That's all you're gonna do all the way down the chain. Now if your counts are right you will end up with the double crochet as being your end. So if that was single the next one is a double. So go all the way down your chain and going single, double, single, double and then you will end up with the double crochet at the very end. And please do this all the way down your chain and I'll see you at the end of the chain. So I'm coming up all the way to the end and the last chain here is a double crochet. So now that we have the chain done it gets easier. So every row now going is going to be the next row. So turn your work. So you just finished with the double crochet. Now in other projects they have this kind of concept but they have it so that it's switching it every other one. This one here is, is different. So you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And I want you to think that this is a double crochet because it is and this is also a double crochet. And this is a single. 
So it'll stay a single. And then the next one is gotta be a double. So it's just alternating once you're going all the way down. So the reason why they're doing this is that the single is continuing to contract it where the double wants to expand and it's a constant battle back and forth. And this is what's creating those no line look that you have. Now in time, you're going to find yourself, you don't really have to think about it. You just do the automatic single, double, single, double. The next one is a single and then in the turning chain is a double crochet. So just go right into the chain itself. Don't go into a space and it will keep it nice and closed. So that road that we just did is the same now for the remaining of this project. That's how hard it is. So let's turn our work and so we're gonna begin row number two again. So just chain three. So this double crochet here is, this chain three is a double crochet. The next one has to be a single. So watch this first one to make sure that you start off properly. So single and then the next one is a double. And you're going to notice that the double crochets kind of sit above in, in in there. So you see this is a single, this is a, a double here. And do you see that this one's sunken a little bit more? It's, it's very slight but when you're sitting in person you can feel the difference because the singles don't have a lot of um, meat to it where the doubles do. So using your fingers by squishing down you can definitely uh, tell the difference but you can also see it too in person. So you're just gonna do this then going all the way and you'll use the striping motion in order to create the nautical stripes that you see. Remember in the very end it's a double crochet in the turning chain. And I'll demonstrate one more row and then I'll show you how to change colors. So you start off with chaining a three and then you do the next one as a single and then double. Now I find when I do big projects like this and I'm doing this I find my next project afterwards I'm doing single, double, single and I'm like I just wanna do the same stitch. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a fun thing. So you're just gonna work your way all the way down and it'll be nice and solid. It's a lot more different in person like here because you got the studio light blasting on it but normally I don't, I can't see my, I can't see through this project at all in, under natural light. Okay so the last one has to be then a double crochet in the turning chain. So they want you to change the colors then strategically and what you wanna do with that and let's cover that next. So when you're ready to change color just snip the yarn and just pull it out of the last one like that. And then just turn it to get it ready and then get your next ball up. I'm gonna do the blue. I just happen to have the same colors here. So create a slip knot first. Just start a new color and put it on. So you wanna come into the very first one. So we know that the first one when we go to start is going to be chaining a three. So that doesn't change just because it's a color. So you're gonna attach it with the slip stitch and then chain three. So one, two, three. So now that I chain three, I wanna be very conscientious where I'm getting my next stitch. So the next stitch is in a single crochet and if I go right up over top of these stragglers, then they get stuck up underneath. So the next one has to be a double and I would go over top of those stragglers for about two inches if I were you and you or me. And if you're feeling like it's still gonna pop out you can just throw it through a tapestry needle which I will demonstrate in just a few minutes. So I'm maintaining the exact same stitch. I'm just using a different color. And that's all we're gonna do. So you're gonna go back and forth then with your new color and it has all those instructions on the pattern and you can see that uh, when you, you can download the, that if you follow the link and the more information of this video. So let's just say we're finished this project. You can just turn it over and let's show you how to finish it with the tapestry needle. So with the tapestry needle you just wanna take the last loose end and you wanna do this with any of the loose ends. Now I would literally just cut this because you buried it over top. I would literally just cut that and not worry about it because we buried it in enough and this yarn has a bit of texture that it will hold on to it. So taking this one here you wanna just drag it through the same color. So don't go down and put it through a color that it doesn't belong in and go once and then through a slightly different path twice and then finally a new path a third time. The project can never stretch in three directions at one time. 
and therefore you can just safely cut that and it should never fall out and you'll wanna do your starting strand as well and then you can just pull on it and shape it. So there is some fringing on here. Let's talk a little bit about that next. So let's talk about the fringe. So the fringe is made up of three strands that are about 12 inches long. You are going to want to measure that. So let's just uh, back you out here. So you wanna do uh, 12 strands, or sorry, three strands and they're about 12 inches long. I'm just roughly guessing just for tutorial sake today and that's all I wanna do. So I got three. So this will end up being a six, okay? And what I want to do is that I want to just take it in my hand and fold it. And then I wanna grab my sample. So I'm gonna say this is the, the good side. So you want to take the hook and go on the outside from the back end and pull that loop through. And when you pull through, you wanna just pull enough so that you can get your fingers in here and you can just take the other side of that and go down. Now the reason why we went for the back to the front is see this line? That'll end up on the good side. So if you uh, go down through the front and then pull it through, this nice line will end up on the back of your afghan which is not what you want. So you just wanna grab like 12 inches and then at the end of this, if you're measuring it out, you're just gonna lay it down on something and just kind of like steam it up or you can just kind of fold down all the fibers and then you can just safely cut along the base to get all the same length. So again, just moving along, just equally space it. So coming from the, the back to the front and then taking that loop and pulling it through and then pull through so that ends up on the good side. And that would be how you do the fringe. And once you're satisfied with the width of the length of it, you just take your scissors and then you just kind of match it all the way down. But I would do the whole thing before you start cutting though so that you have a reference point and that would be good to go. So that's what I would do if I were you and this and this were me and this is the Nautical Stripes Crochet Blanket by Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.